There are fears of al-Qaeda's growing influence inside Syria. Several jihadist groups have taken over areas in the northern part of the country. They have a hold on it, essentially. And as Syria's civil war drags on, more and more of these foreign fighters are coming to join the war. As Nick Payton Walsh reports in an exclusive story, they are using Turkey often as a launching point. Just miles from Syria's savage war is Turkey's Hatay airport. International in all the wrong ways. Every flight we secretly film land carried men from countries Al-Qaeda calls home. Why are they here? Two from Mauritania, these four from Libya with large backpacks. Hello. How are you doing? Where are you from? In Benghazi. In Benghazi, okay. okay. Another from Egypt, then Saudi Arabia, even Leicester in the UK. Most must be innocently travelling, but many say little and rush into waiting cars. It's astonishing to see such a global crowd so open and close to Syria where Al-Qaeda is blooming right under the noses of Turkish border control. Many arrivals are bound for this, the border into Syria. The smuggler drives us along his route from the airport through safe houses around Hatay towards the fence, where he delivers foreign jihadis straight to the Al-Qaeda-linked militants sweeping to power in Syria's anarchic north. When they get to the fence, he says, they kneel and cry, they weep, like they've just met something more precious to them than their own family. They believe this land, Syria, is where God's judgment will come to pass. What's extraordinary is the sheer pace. What started as a trickle of foreign recruits going to fight the Syrian regime has turned into a flood, we're told, trebling in pace since the chemical attacks around Damascus in August. This smuggler, in the last few months, shipping across 400 people. The Siraki jihadi was shaking with excitement about his one-way trip the next morning. I'm so happy to be going to Syria, he says. Hopefully, I will die fighting. There are as many Europeans coming as Arabs now. We want an Islamic caliphate from Syria to Anbar in Iraq, without borders, but with Islamic law. Our fight is with the West now, too, as their silence means they're complicit. This is so serious for Turkey that you can now see Al-Qaeda from the Turkish border. The black flag of the Islamic State of Iraq and Syria showing they run the Syrian town, Jarablus. Turkey insists it is fighting extremism, but this frantic traffic of jihadis risks making Al-Qaeda the new rulers of Syria's north and putting their latest and boldest sanctuary right on NATO's most volatile border. Well, Nick Payne Walsh joins me now live from Gaziantep, Turkey, with more details on his exclusive story and also reaction, uh, Nick, uh, from the Turkish government to your report. Have you had any, given that in your report we see some jihadis using Turkey as a launching point? Well, Turkey, in many ways, I think, has been caught in a bind, you know, so initially vocally outspoken in favor of the Syrian rebels, but seeing as international support hasn't flooded in, the jihadists, the radicals rising to power uh, across the border here. They were quite clear, though. One Turkish official we spoke to saying, look, Turkey, of all countries in this region, has suffered most from terrorism, from extremism. We've done all we can uh, to fight that, ridicule any suggestions that they've been complicit in some way in this traffic across the border, or that they hadn't really done enough. One saying, though, if it is proven they are these smuggling routes, of course they must intervene to stop that happening. The key point, though, this Turkish official made to us, quite simply, the reason this radicalization is happening, in the words of uh, Turkish President Abdullah Gul speaking at the weekend, the potential for an Afghanistan, a kind of radicalized caliphate state uh, like we saw under the Taliban in Afghanistan, being simply on the shores of the Mediterranean, is because the international community hasn't intervened fast enough yet at all. They haven't stepped in to solve the crisis in Syria, and that's created the vacuum inside, just in the north of the country, across the border that these radicals, that Al-Qaeda-linked militants, have stepped into, Hala. But these Al-Qaeda-linked militants have been challenged in some parts of Syria, haven't they? 
Well, they have in some ways. The issue, though, is that ISIS, the group you heard about, the Islamic State of Iraq in Syria, is so much more together, efficient, ideological, uh, better resourced and funded in many ways that few of the more moderate Islamist groups want to challenge them right now. Some of the larger ones simply, we're told, would rather fight the regime. They don't want another front line fighting off these often foreign uh, al-Qaeda-linked militants, so in many ways accommodate them, but in fact often see now that rapid advance of ISIS across this huge uh, swathe of the north. They now have a big controlling influence over. It's happening so rapidly that in fact that policy of appeasement is now out of date and some of them are finding themselves pushed back and in fact having their ability to even be in Syria for some of these more moderate groups questioned, Harlem.